Hello, I'm Dr. Dina Stacer, and since 1997, I've been teaching parents who've been involved in high-conflict custody disputes how to end the conflict and get out of the court system. I also teach them how to protect their children from permanent emotional damage. One of the things that I would like to introduce you to is what I call the co-parenting quadrant. Now, the courts want you to learn how to co-parent. But a lot of times people in high conflict cannot co-parent the way the courts want them to. So I think first of all, we need to define what do the courts want you to do? What, what do they mean by co-parenting? And I like to call it cooperative co-parenting. Now cooperative means both parents working together. My definition of cooperative co-parenting is that both parents have the same mindset about the other parent. That we both have the same belief about each other and that is we're both important in the children's life. So if you have the mindset that the other parent's important in the children's life and they have the same mindset about you that you're important in the children's life, well then you're willing to work together, correct? You also believe that both parents have the best interests of the children at heart, that you're both able to work together. So what I call that is willing and able. Now willing is an attitude and able is a skill. So parents that are willing to work together and able to work together are cooperative co-parents. Those parents can talk to each other they can figure out what they want to do on some issue. A child needs some homework help or they're failing in some area or they need some health decisions made. And those parents can put their differences aside, even if they don't like each other anymore, to be able to come up with a decision they both agree to and they're both willing and able to support that decision. And they're also willing and able to support their relationship with the children. So each parent is supporting the other parent and both parents are supporting the child in the same way. So we're going to call that cooperative co-parenting. Now, so willing and able is really what it gets down to. And, and that I said is a mindset. But now let's talk about where, you know, if you're watching this video, chances are you're saying, yeah, but that's not me. Well, let's see if this one fits you. So how about unwilling and able? What if the other parent is unwilling, but they're capable. Well, let's define unwilling. If you look on the internet and you type in unwilling, unwilling is also an attitude. But if you look at the real definition, it's non-compliant, aggressive, and defiant. That's not just a little like, I don't want to. That's a real stubborn stance. Could be obdurate, a very strong word for inflexible, refusing to bend and move. So somebody who's unwilling to work with the other parent, that's a higher level. It's a mindset against the other parent or a different mindset than that parent who's trying to get them to work with them. But let's say they're capable. So We've got a parent or two parents that are unwilling to work with each other. Or we have one parent that's trying to work with the other parent and they can't get them to. And they'd say, yeah, you know what? They're unwilling. Once in a while, I will have a parent that says to me, you know, I'm unwilling now. I used to be willing. Well, you get worn out. If you're trying and trying and trying to co-parent the traditional way the courts want you to, you get exhausted. So you may have been willing before and now you feel like you're unwilling. But for the most part, if you define unwilling as non-compliant and aggressive and defiant, well, it's a bigger step than just, you know, I'm tired of working with you. That's what happens after you get exhausted. So we can't really call that cooperative co-parenting, can we? Because cooperative means both parents working together. So we're going to cross that one out and we're going to call it instead conflictual co-parenting. It's still a form of co-parenting, but it's called conflictual co-parenting. That's my definition for it because there are cooperative co-parenting and then we have conflict. So let's go to the next one and let's see what we find. So in this case, what we have is somebody who's willing 
but they're unable. Now, what do I mean by that? We already know what willing means. They, they, they want to, they have a mindset, they're trying, they're making an effort, but unable. Now, if you look up the definition of unable in the dictionary or online, you're going to find about six different kinds of unable. One of unables is that the person is lacking skills. They're lacking resources. They're lacking the information. And what's good about that is if they're willing, but they get the information, for example, you get information on this website and you go, oh, I didn't know I could do it that way. Oh, I don't have to do things the same way I was trying to do it. Oh, I could have a different approach. Then you become able that we have two people that are possibly able to co-parent together. Unfortunately, though, there's about five other unables. So what is unable? Well, my favorite unable is dropped on head like Humpty Dumpty. And then they tried to sew it up. The doctors and physicians came on the run and said, okay, we sewed it all up the best we could, but here's a Tupperware container of some extra egg yolk that didn't go back in. So I want you to keep it in the refrigerator and maybe someday, just possibly someday, we'll figure out a way to invent how to get that egg yolk back in Humpty Dumpty's head. Now I'm being facetious, but what really I've found is there are a lot of parents who are unable. Not only are they lacking in skills, but they just don't have the emotional capacity for it. They're lacking in emotional intelligence. They're lacking in the ability mentally. Maybe there's a disability. Maybe they've done some drugs so long that their brain isn't functioning at the highest capacity. Maybe they have some addictions that stop them and they're higher priority. Maybe that person is just unable to do whatever it takes for them to be the kind of parent that you want them to be. Now this is really important you understand this because there's a lot of parents that are ordered to learn how to co-parent but they find that the other parent is unable. I think there's two kinds of conflictual co-parenting. They are people who are unable and people who are unwilling and often they're both. So we can't call this cooperative co-parenting either, can we? Except for if one of the persons gets the skills and resources. I'm hoping that this website will help you become more able if you just don't know how to deal with the other parent. But we have to cross that one off and that one also is conflictual co-parenting. Hmm. We have the odds here. We have one quadrant where we have willing and able and now we have two quadrants that are unwilling and able or willing and unable. And you can guess what the next one is. We have unwilling and unable. Now we already did the definitions for unwilling. Okay, we have people that are stubborn, defiant, non-compliant, and aggressive, and we have unable, dropped on head, not capable, or we have somebody who could possibly be capable, but they really are lacking in emotional intelligence or their ability to have ethical prowess, or they just don't have what it takes. Maybe they have character flaws or parental deficiencies. And this is a really good time for me to define my definition of conflictual co-parenting. Now, remember I said that with cooperative co-parenting, it was two parents having the same mindset and they both believe the other parent has the best interest of the children at heart. They both, they both support the other parent's relationship with the children. They both believe the other parent's important in the children's lives and they both will do whatever it takes to put their differences aside and support that relationship. So if we don't have that, then what do we have? Well, conflictual co-parenting is that one or both parents does not have the best interests of the children at heart or one or both parents believes the other parent doesn't. Number two, one or both parents believes that the other parent has parental deficiencies, character flaws, substance abuse issues, personality disorder, or is in some way detrimental to the children. That's really where the rubber meets the road, isn't it? It's not a mindset anymore that I think I can work with you. I think you're like, you know, you're trouble. 
I think you're problem. I think you're nuts. I think you actually were dropped on your head when you were born. So we've got parents that are fighting, trying to learn how to cooperatively co-parent or can't or never will. And the courts are shoving them into one quadrant when really and truly we have three quadrants that it's, the odds are against you. Now here's what I personally have discovered that unwilling and unable parents often of course are the most difficult because how do you work with someone who's unwilling you don't what's going to happen to get them willing maybe you can get them to court and the courts will scare the daylights out of them maybe it's going to cost them money and they'll comply but even then i found that most people hide behind unwilling because they're unable So what you might find that one parent who you thought was just unwilling is actually unable. And this is probably the biggest quadrant that I think most people fit into when it comes to conflictual co-parenting. And that is that the parent is unable, so they use unwilling so they can save face. See, I don't want you to know I don't know how to parent. I don't want you to know that you're a better parent than I am. I don't want you to know that I don't have the capacity to ha- or the patience or the energy or the insight to parent like you do. So as long as I can keep you engaged in a fight, as long as I can keep you at war with me, then both of us get blamed by the courts, don't we? And both of us have to go take co-parenting classes together. And both of us are on the same plane as being bad for our children. And it's, it's true. Right? As long as you're emotionally upset, you're emotionally distracted, you're not present for your children. So it's lights on, no one's home for both parents, even though maybe you are capable. My assumption is if you're watching this video, you're looking for answers and that you are capable. You just have gotten stuck in I don't know how. And remember, that's one of those unables. I just don't know how. But I'm looking for answers. And the minute I learn, I implement them. I get better results. So I like this co-parenting quadrant. I think it's really valuable for people to see. And the other part about that is I want you to understand how much life energy you're giving to the other parent in any of the three quadrants if, there's, if you're not able to do willing and able. How much life energy do you want to fight over with somebody who's unwilling? How much life energy are you using for somebody who's unable? And you go, dang, that's just not fair. That other parent's not capable. I know. There's a lot of grief over that one. There's a lot of sadness when you come to the realization that parent just can't. They won't. They can't. That's tough. That's where you... You and only you have to make a decision that you're going to stop throwing your energy away every day trying to get that parent to change, trying to get the courts to see how awful they are or stupid they are or stubborn they are or mean they are when really and truly they're unable. They're lacking in emotional intelligence. They're lacking in resources. They're lacking in skills. They're lacking in whatever it is that they need to step up and be a brilliant parent and it's really sad when you come to the grips of that realization it's very sad you go oh my gosh I had children with somebody who's unable oh my gosh that's a sad day especially if you miss out on some of those firsts that kids have because the other parent has them but as long as you start understanding that maybe they're unable then you stop giving your energy to what you have been giving it to, and that is to prove that they're unable. And you start becoming able yourself with how you help your children become brilliant, capable, emotionally intelligent, in love with life, creative, honest, curious, passionate, You alone can save your children. You alone can do what you need to do without using your energy up in the wrong way. 
I went around the room recently and I asked all the parents in the class, including a grandmother, how much energy do you give to the other parent every day? And it was anywhere from 1% to 25%. Some of the people had said it was at 70 till I took this class. We have to start with you have to see this quadrant and realize that the courts expect you to become willing and able because they don't know that some parents can't. They don't want to believe that. But if you keep spinning your wheels trying to get the other parent into the court system to prove they're not capable, or you have to react to them because they're trying to prove that they're even on the same pace with you, your life energy is being sh you know, shoved down the river instead of giving it to your children. So you got to use the language of co-parenting in the court system, but you've got to practice parallel parenting or what I call mom's world, dad's world. Recognize where you are, figure out where the other parent is, make a decision not to give them any more of your energy that's wasted and use that energy now to get into your children's imagination and build a wonderful world. I do have more videos that talk about mom's world, dad's world, parallel parenting, how to get into your children's imagination, how to really let go of the other parent, how to disengage. I have a lot of information for you, but for now, I just need you to see that there's only really one kind of cooperative co-parenting, but look at the odds. There are three against one if you've got somebody who's been difficult to work with. So stop trying so hard. Stop trying to get them to, to work with you and go build a wonderful life with your children.